Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study. I'm plain and simple, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study of the entire Bible. We are in Job chapter 29. We're going to finish his final case. Um, he makes his fi Job makes his final case here, his final plea to see his point of view. And um, so let's get in it. Job chapter 29. Now, remember, he had already been speaking. And um, so let's pick it up. Verse 1 says, Job continued his discourse, saying, If only I could be as in months gone by, in the days when God watched over me, when this lamp shone above my head, and I walked through darkness by his light. I would be as I was in the days of my youth, when God's friendship rested on my tent, when the Almighty was still with me, and my children were around me, when my feet were bathed in cream, and the rock poured out streams of oil for me, oil for me. When I went out to the city gates and took my seat in the town square, the young men saw me and withdrew, while older men stood to their feet. See, the officials stopped talking and covered their mouths with their hands. The noblemen's voice were hushed, and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouths. When they heard me, they blessed me, and when they saw me, they spoke well of me. Now, um, remember... Job is speaking from the anguish, um, the devastation of his, what had happened to him, his wealth, <clears throat> and his 10 children were taken away from him violently. Um, so, when you're in this time, it is always, you, you feel isolated. You feel alone. You feel abandoned. Um, so this is, you see, this is the what, what, the what Job is speaking from. Verse 12. For I rescued the poor man who cried out for help, and the father's child who had no one to support him. Now remember, they, Job's friends, agreed to this, but then turned around and says, well, you didn't help them, okay? <laughs> Verse 13, the dying man blessed me, and, and I made the widow's heart rejoice. I clothed myself in righteousness, and it enveloped me. My just decisions were like the robe and the turban. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was father to the needy. And I examined the case of the stranger, shattered the fangs of the unjust, and snatched the prey from his teeth. So I thought, I will die in my own death, multiply my days as the sand, my ritual have access to water, and the dew will rest on my branches all night. My strength will be refreshed within me, and my bowl will be renewed in my hand. Men listened to me with expectation, waiting silent for my advice. After a word from me, they did not speak again. My speech settled on them like dew. They waited for me as for the rain and opened their mouths as for the spring showers. If I smiled at them, they couldn't believe it. They were thrilled at the light of my countenance. I directed their course and presided as chief. I lived among, I, I lived as a king among his troops, like one who comforts those who mourn. Um, again, we could certainly, we can certainly um, sympathize with Job. Um, like you say, what what a difference a day makes, right? Verse 30, but now they mock me. Men younger than I than, than I am, whose fathers I would have refused to put 
to put with my sheepdogs. What used to me was the strength of their hands, the vigor had left them, emaciated from poverty and hunger. They gnawed uh, the dry land, the desolate wasteland by night. They pluck mallow among the shrubs and the roots uh, of the broom, broom tree were their food. They were expelled from human society. People shouted at them as if they were thieves. Uh, they are living on the slopes of the wadis, among the rocks, and in the holes in the ground. Uh, the bray among the shrubs, the hubble beneath the thistle. Foolish men without, um, foolish men without even a name. They were forced to leave the land. Now I am mocked by their songs. I have become an object of scorn to them. They despise me and keep their distance from me. They do not hesitate to spit in my face because God has loosened my bowstring and oppressed me. They have cast off restraint in my presence. They rabble, uh, the rabble rise up at my right. They trap my feet. They construct their siege ramps against me. They tear up my path. They continue to my destruction without anyone to help them. They advance as though a gaping breach. They keep rolling. They keep rolling through the ruins. Terrors are turned loose against me. They chase my dignity away like the wind, and my prosperity has passed like a cloud. Now my life is poured out before my eyes, and the days of suffering have seized me. The night pierced my bones, and but my gnawing pains never. Rest. Now, let me, let me say this too. I think from what we can see right here, this is this discourse took place seven days after everything had happened to Job. Now, one of the things that you will note in terms of scripture sometimes is for, for what we have here is the telling of a story. And it's not always in chronicle, chronological, chronological order, it's not meant to say at seven o'clock this happened, at seven o five this happened, and at seven o seven fifteen this happened like that. They just they're just telling the story. So for example, we so we don't know exactly the timeline. We we don't know the time difference between when Satan first took all of his wealth and killed his children, and then the second when he took his health. I mean, took his health. So, so for example, Job, it, the story, the narrative is not telling the time. For even so, so we know that seven days after they had this discourse, but even in that, do we know the, the full time span of the discourse? Now, another thing is that he could be just re recounting the events, like the nerve of all of the people, that all of a sudden, people who respected him, then you got these bands of people that came and just took all of his wealth. So, so why did that happen? In other words, why didn't the bands, these these raiders, right? Why didn't they take his stuff before? In other words, from his perspective, why didn't this happen? Verse 18, my clothing is distorted with great force. He chokes me by the neck of my garments. He throws me into the mud, and I have become like dust and ashes. I cry out to you for help, but you do not answer me. When I stand up, you merely look at me. You have turned against me with cruelty. You harass me with your strong hand. You lift me up on the wind and make me ride it. You scatter me. <coughs> you scatter me in the storm. You know that you will lead me to death and place the place upon it. For all who who live, you know. You, uh, yet no one would stretch out his hand against a ruined man when he cries out to help. To, uh, when he cry out to him for help because of his distress, have I not wept for those who have fallen on hard times? Has my soul not grieved for the needy? For when I hope for good, evil came. 
when I look for light, darkness came. I am turning with, within and cannot rest. The days of suffering comfort me. I walked about blackened but not by the sun. I stood in the assembly and cried out for help. I have become a brother of two jackals and a companion to ostracists. My skin blackens and flake off. And my bones burn uh, and my bones burn with fever. My lyre is used for mourning and my fruit sound for uh, for weeping. Um come on. Oh uh, my computer froze up. Let me say this why it is rebooting re rebooting. I might have to go to my secondary thing here. Um I just want to say, I have this one thought, verse 30 says, my skin blackens and flakes off. This, this term blackens is not racial. Now I say that because there are people who read the Bible and uh, and they um, they read the Bible. Hmm. Okay, what the... Uh, uh, all right. I'm trying to go to... Come on. All right, let's do like this then. My screen here is flicking up, freaking uh Okay, guys. Uh. All right. Okay, let's see here. All right, here we go. <laughs> ah, my screen here was f um, freezing up. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to say that there were some people would take a verse like that and try to say that Job was black. Okay, that that wasn't his point. All right, verse chapter thirty-one, and then uh, verse um, the one says, "I have made a covenant with my eyes. How then can I look at a young woman?" Now. Jesus would make a statement that um, if a man, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery with in your heart. Now it's kind of interesting. Job makes this statement here that I have made a covenant with my eyes. How then can I look at a young woman? So we live in a society where sex sells. So young men as well as old men have to make that covenant with their eyes. Okay. And it is hard to do, especially when you walk out and you get tested with the dress, the fashions, what's available. Think about this. How can I look upon a young woman? Think about what is available through social media these days. There's a lot of temptation that we certainly have to resist. Verse 2, what portion would I have from God above? Or what inheritance from the Almighty on high? Doesn't disaster come to the unjust and the misfortunes to the evildoer? Does he not see my ways and number all my steps? If I have walked in falsehood or my foot has rushed to deceit, let God weigh in and accurate scales. Let, I'm sorry. If I've walked in falsehood on my, or my foot has rushed to deceit, let God weigh me in accurate scales. And he will recognize my integrity. Now again, remember these statements are going to come back to kind of haunt Job. Because again, he's not seen. He doesn't know what God knows. For example, he, from, from this perspective, he doesn't know what we know. Remember, we know it because of Revelations chapters 1 and 2. Verse 7, my steps have turned away and my heart has followed my eyes. Or impurity has stained my hand. Let someone eat what I have sown, and let my crops be uprooted. Now again, he's he's, he's kind of touting his purity, which, when it relates to his suffering, wasn't the point. Okay, in other words, he's not suffering because he didn't because he fell into sin, or because he was corrupt or lustful or things like that. So he's making the wrong case. Okay, that's his, that's my point here. He's making the wrong case. 
If my heart has been seduced by my neighbor's wife, or I have lurked at his door, let my own wife grind grain for another man, and let other men sleep with her. Kind of harsh, especially for the wife. Um, but his point is that, I, it, again, it's his thing is that, why am I suffering? <laughs> right? In other words, I've seen people in the adultery of the fair. I've seen this, right? In other words, he's aware of this. He said, I'm not doing these things, and I have made it my point not to do these things. By the way, God has even said, Job has been a righteous man. But this is to the wrong argument, Job. You're not suffering because... You, you, you failed at these things here. Um, for that would be a disgrace, right? Uh, let me go back to, I'm going to read verse 9 again. If my heart has been seduced by my neighbor's wife, or I've lurked at her door, um, okay, all right, um, let, okay, if my heart had been seduced by my neighbor's wife, or I looked at, at, at his door, let my own wife grind for another man, let other men sleep with her, for that would be a disgrace. It would be a crime deserving punishment. For uh, it's fires that consume down to abandon. It would destroy my entire harvest if I dismissed the case of a male or female servant when they made a complaint against me. What could I do when God stands up to judge? Kind of interesting here that he kind of implies that he has had the cause for slaves, right? Interesting. Um, verse 4, 15. Um, verse 14 again. What could I do when God stands up to judge? How should I answer him when he calls me to account? Did not the one who made me in the womb also make them? Did not the same God form us both in the room? So if you ever wanted a case or one of the scriptures for the pro-choice position, that certainly is one. How God says he makes us from the room. I'm, a, I'm not going to get into that debate because again, to me, the abortion bait is one that is a sinful nature. Okay? the sinfulness of man. But there is your case right there. God sees the life of the baby from conception, the life of the baby in the womb. Verse 16, if I refuse the wish of the poor, let the widow's eyes go blind. If, if I have eaten a few crumbs alone without letting the fathers eat any of it for my, for my youth, I've raised as a father since the day I was born, I guided the widow. I have seen anyone dying for lack of clothing or the needy person without a cloak. If he did not if he did not bless me while warming himself with the fleece of my sheep, if I ever cast my vote against the fatherless child, when I saw I had, um, I had support in the city gate and let my shoulder blade fall from my back and my arm pulled from its sockets. A disaster from God terrifies me because of his matches. I could not do these things. If I place confidence in gold or call fine gold my trust. If I rejoice because my wealth is great or because my own hands had acquitted so much. If I've gazed at the sun while it was shining or at the moon moving in splendor so that my heart was secretly enticed and I threw them a kiss. This would be a crime deserving a punishment for I would have denied God above. Have I, have I rejoiced over my enemy's distress or become excited when trouble came his way? I have not allowed, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by asking for the, for his life with a curse. Haven't the members of my household said, Who is there who has not had enough to eat at Job's table? No stranger had had to spend the night on the street, for I opened my door to the traveler. Have I covered my transgression as others do? 
by hiding my guilt in my heart because I greatly feared the crowds and the contempt came of uh, the contempt of clans terrified me so I grew silent and would not go outside if only I had someone to hear my case here is my signature let the almighty answer me uh, you're going to get your wrist Job let my opponents compose this indictment now you're talking about God here right I was surely carried, carried on my shoulders and wore it like a crown. I would give him an account of all my steps. I would approach him like a prince. If my, if my land cries out against me and its pharaohs join me in weeping, if I've consumed its pro, uh, produce without payment, if I can, um, do, uh, come on, this thing here, uh, this hiding here, if I had consumed, if I had consumed its produce without payment, or show contempt for its tenants, then let thorns grow instead of wheat, and trigger seeds instead of barley. And then it says, um, "Let me see right here. Uh, my computer screen is, is really acting up here. Um, let me read verse 40 again, guys. Uh, verse 40. Then let let thorns grow instead of wheat." And stink weed instead of barley. The words of Job are concluded. Um, let me come out of here because now nah, it's for some reason this thing has been really acting up. Computer, computer here. All right, all right. So, um, so the in our next study we're going to get into another man, um, who will come and um, I, I'll talk about him later, but. The, the, one of the problems here with Job, his statement, okay, as he lists all of his goodnesses, right? As he lists all his goodness. Remember, none of that is relevant because that's not why he's suffering. To so his point is, let me plead my case to you. Let me tell you, I don't understand why you're not answering me, God. I don't understand why am I suffering like this. But remember... None of that was why he is suffering. It's it's so it's case is brutal, okay. Um, it's a good case in the sense if you want to say, well, okay, he's touting his horn. The problem, of course, is that um, when you when you want to stand before God, like I say, what we have seen with Job. Is kind of the human side of how we respond to suffering, what we think is right or wrong. In absence of when we don't have God commenting, in absence when we don't know the revelation, right? We don't know the revelation that we have with Job, right? But stay tuned because <laughs> God is going to show up. And um, so, all right, guys, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective. As always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you in the next study.